Um, so, like it says right here, I want you to not think about whether you're right or you're wrong. I want to hear what you think. So would somebody be willing to vote first? Tell us what concave means. Yeah? It goes like that. <laughs> it goes like that. Yeah. Okay, like in your everyday life, we're just some things that are concave. A bowl. Bowls are concave. Spoons. Mm -hmm. Contact me, hold it like this. Contact me, hold it right, okay. Yeah? I said uh, it's concave wherever there's a horizontal tangent line. Okay. Oh, well Oh my then. god, that's pretty bad. Nice. Okay. Yeah. But we're looking for colloquially, which means every day. What things are concave in your everyday life? What other things you want? What other things? More parabolas. <laughs> every day, I'm parabolas. Every day is math day. Mm -hmm. How about uh, um, some of you girls putting on makeup? Do you use something that's concave? Ever? Are you like a magnifying mirror? Yeah. Are those concave? Yeah, they are, but you never use them? we don't use those. Oh, Sorry. I always thought it was normal. My mom always used this, so you just assume the things your parents do are normal. <laughs> that's what it is, but anyway, so. Did you say a tornado? Oh. And that's that's what they call uh, those mirrors. They call them concave mirrors, right? And all these things are like there's this caving in to them. Okay, so what I'd like to do is just address this picture right now. Okay, and maybe can someone come up and without not having to use words, but just show us where this thing is concave. You want to do it? You have a question. Yes. Can, so, like, in our minds, concave is like being uh -huh. because, Interior. like, God. Yeah. Yeah. But can't it concave up? Is that con? That's convex. I was looking it up uh -huh. on like math terminus, uh -huh. and it was like <laughs> it can concave upwards. We're gonna get to that. I want to start with your your uh, what do you call it? Intuitive notion of what concave is and where it's concave. Can you show us where it's concave? Do you want me to like write it or? Uh, just like somehow draw indicate on the drawing here where it's coming. Circle. You could uh, maybe put little marks like it's really concave from here to there, or or it's it's a red uh, pen right now, so you could just trace over it in red. Well. So let's just stick with concave instead of convex. Let's just stay with what you're thinking of as concave. I'm just still talking to you about concave and what you think concave is, what most of us would think concave is. But, okay. Now looking up and everyone thinks probably this, right there. Good, okay. Now, let me ask you this about what you've drawn. Um, does maybe it's concaveness, like, can we, can, does it keep you mean concave if we go this direction? Mm -hmm. would, you, would you say, yeah, you agree with that? Like, still like this. Let's use concave and convex, okay? It's so it's still dip. It's still dip from right there all the way to that. Let's, let, like you said, concave and convex. Let's use that, okay? So some parts of it you we call convex, and some parts we call concave, okay? Maybe you can stick with me and not worry about the math terms, which we will learn. Uh, can you trace over? And if you're done, that's fine. But uh, where? Only where it's convex and don't trace over where it's con. Only where it's concave and don't trace over where it's convex. It like blurs right here. Blurs. Okay, so you just go to where you think it stops. If if that's where it stops, then just leave it. The that. whole thing. It's like because where do you draw the line on like this is dipping down, but this is. You tell me. You clearly you feel like this is concave. Yeah, and not I'm, convex. It's still like there. Okay. It's still like dipping down. Okay. But then when it's convex, like it starts to come up, like right there. Okay, let's uh, let's just undo that and just do a different color as well, like um, the yellow. Yellow's not the color. Green. Yellow's my favorite color, but that's okay. Green. <laughs> well, like that yellow is pretty, but then it's just. 
Yeah. Okay, so uh, why don't you then show us in yellow where it's convex? Yeah. Sorry. Uh, sorry, yellow, green. Okay, I just want that yellow so bad. Hey! <laughs> Thank you. Um, well, it starts to come up here, right there. Okay, so you feel like that's where some convexness is? It's okay. <coughs> Thank you very much, Hannah. Would you like a piece of candy? Yeah. Or would you like to give them the extra credit? Uh, definitely that extra credit. Okay. <laughs> so what are you doing? interpretation of where this is concave and convex. Okay, so since so many people have made mention of it, you might as well you could uh, move over if you wanted to. Come sit with us. Whatever you Come want. Come right here. Come sit with us. Concaveness, which I think is a, is a natural thing to feel like where it dips down is what we would call, call concave. It goes down like, like this. And then the other would be the convex. Okay? <coughs> so let's put some words to it. Where it dips down like this, okay? It's, it's concaveness, okay? It's concavity is kind of pointing in which direction would you say? Uh, oh, yeah. I wish that was more to it. I feel like it's actually, probably because I learned this a long time ago, and you know, that's just what I know it to be. Okay, so this is actually concave up. Yeah. Okay, and uh, I should change those colors. Take it a little bit more to read, John. Um, well, deal. Deal. Okay, and this is then concave down. No surprise. If one's concave up, the other one's concave down. So there's no convex. It's concave up or it's concave down. Okay. I know. For the record. I'm not impressed. You should be. No. OK. Because that's what you looked up. That's not what you, I'm more interested in these things that you drew. I'm much more impressed by those. Yeah. Are you impressed? Yes. Yes. Okay. <laughs> okay, but let's now agree that um, we're, like at some point concave upness and concave downness have to meet. Or in other words, concave upness has to end and concave downness has to begin and take over. Okay? So. Stay over, like how do you go that way? That's a good question. So I'm going to have to erase this because I don't really know a better way to do it. So I'm going to erase the whole thing and then paste the, the original graph back on. But we see where Hannah has, uh, actually let's, let's write on top of Hannah's for the moment. Um, she said, well, look here, this, this is kind of all through here, looks to me like it's being concave down. And throughout here, it looks like it's being concave up. And that is a natural feeling. But there needs to be not any overlap, okay? Where it's concave down, it needs to be concave down only. Where it's concave up, it needs to be concave up only, okay? And there is a, a really technical mathematical definition. And we're gonna look at that. But if we had to just put a point on it, 
Would somebody be willing to come up and put a point at the places where they feel like the concave upness and concave downness are meeting, and one is stopping and one is taking over? Connor? Right, and we'll do uh, uh, light blue. There you go. Light. Don't look at me, you just tell me what you think. Do you feel like that's the place where, say, so here, we're, would we agree that it's starting from way over here as Hannah has drawn it, it's concave down? Or convex down. Okay, so what we're trying to get out of you, Connor, is where it stops being concave down and starts being concave up. Here, hold for this one right here. Okay, so it stops being concave down right there. I would think so. Okay. Does that mean that it's not concave up over here? It doesn't mean that? Does it have to be a complete defining difference? Yeah, there's, no, there's going to be no overlap here. There's going to be a place where concave downness ends and concave upness starts with no overlap. What you have here is this kind of looks like it's all concave down, but also from here to there, it's concave up. And from here to there, it's concave. Do you see what I'm saying? There's all this overlap. We want no overlap. So why don't we just. Uh, I can see you're already rethinking it. No good, Gas Connor. One more, I think. There it is. Okay. You can put a, you can put a dot. You can put a little like mark on the graph, whatever. downness could stop, and this concave upness could uh, begin. And then over here, this concave upness could stop, and the concave downness can begin, and then the concave downness stops, and the concave upness then continues forever. Okay? We want to slip up. Hey, whoa. <laughs> okay, all I'm asking <laughs> is if we agree that those points are good enough. Okay? Again, they're not going to be exact, but they're good enough. Okay, so this is great. Now we see what concave upness looks like and what concave downness looks like. Yeah. Okay. And we can see that, uh, like those, those original red and, and yellow um, tracings over the original function, we can see how they kind of don't work. How it's not concave down here. This is clearly part of concave upness. That kind of a shape. Yeah. Right. And this, so this is where, uh, uh, like an upwards bowl, would meet a downwards bowl. 
Okay, now we're gonna we're gonna get more in depth with with the term I'm about to tell you, but I want you to know what those points are and what they look like. Okay, these points and points like them are called points of inflection. Bless you. Now we're gonna we're gonna figure out ways to find points of inflection, but not yet. But that's what they are. That's where concave upness and concave downness uh, meet. Okay. Um, and where it switches, specifically switches from a concave up to a concave down and vice versa. Okay. All right. Sometimes we'll have things that we think through our calculations are points of inflection, but it turns out concave up just kind of ends, but then keeps being concave up after that. Okay. We'll see what I mean a little bit later. Right. <coughs> Um, all right, let's, let's see what we can do from here. Um, yeah, so at those points, those points are very important, okay? We want to find those points because what we want to do, you'll find out why, we want to find those places, those intervals where our functions are concave up and concave down. Here's what I want you to do. Here's the deep, deep stuff. I want you to do this individually to start with, and, and we might turn to each other and work with each other, but I really want you to give this some thought. Okay? I want you to think about these points right there where the concave upness and concave downness meet. And on your notes, or maybe deep, deep inside your brain, you're meditating. I want you to, to make a connection between those points and the derivative of the function. Derivative, or remember the slope of the function is the derivative, right? So make a connection if you could. Just take a look at it, stare at it. Do as much thinking as you possibly can in the time that they give you to make a connection between the slope, the derivative, and where those points exist. Okay? So, go ahead, think about it. Give us a thought. We're relating the concaveness to derivative. The, these points here, where the concaveness changes, right? Those, those points, right? Those points of inflection to derivative. So, who's got something they can think of some good stuff? Who's got some connection between the value of the slope, which we call the derivative, uh, and those places? Those places. Yeah. I think it must be the value of the uh, slope between the two points where the slope changes. Where the slope changes? Yeah. Changes like from? Where, where, where the slope is zero. Where the slope is zero. Okay, when the slope is zero of the, I want to talk about the, this purple thing, right? Yeah. Okay, so where the slope is zero, you think at those places, you will find. No, I think that it's like the, uh, it's like the theorem. Like the theorem about the between two points, there must always be a point of where the slope is like. Uh -huh. So that's 
so that sounds like the mean value theorem. Yeah, the mean value. And I think that that point is the point where it's not changing. Yeah. Yeah. That point. So are you saying that these two points here, like you find the slope between them? No. Yeah, that's, that you got the question right. I'm just not understanding your answer, I guess. So I think that the derivative of those two points, so not, not between those two points, of those two points. At those two points? At, yeah. Oh, the deri so the actual value of the derivative, the slope here yeah. and the slope here, OK? It's like uh, the derivative of the line between the points where where the slope is zero. Where the, here? Yeah. Yeah, you're just a line. You're just a line. Oh, so you say the slope here yeah. is the same as the slope between this point and this point? Yeah. I think the slope of the turning point between uh, the between concavity and the points, points of deflection is the same. Yeah. The same as the slope between here and there. Yeah. Okay, okay, I like that. It's out. Let's, let's just investigate that with a picture. Um, so here's the slope at that point of inflection. See, that's what you're saying, right? That slope. That it's the same as the slope from here to there. Did I get that right or am I misunderstanding? Yeah. Okay. I was thinking the same way. I was like, can you find the derivative? Let's see. Well, I'm not sure it's exactly perfect, but that close. Does it look like they could have the same slope? Well, the slope of that, yeah. that two points different. Than the other if they had the same slope, what would be true about these two lines that they just drew? They'd be parallel. They'd be parallel. Okay. All right. Um, so, but that's a good theory. It's the best theory we have so far. It's, it's yeah. only one person has. Uh -huh. Dare to say something. Uh -huh. Okay, so that's good. I like you're looking at it. You're you're thinking about what it could be. It seems though. It seems like it's not quite working out. Kendra, uh, is it where the slope is the steepest? What do you think about that? Yeah. What does everybody think about? Yeah, that those points of inflection will be where the the slope is the steepest slope that you find around. Mm -hmm. I think so. Okay. Let's, um, oh, I should have, uh, mm. here, let's, I should have made that, that's okay. Uh, <coughs> so let's investigate that, let's see if that's this, like, if it's the steepest right at that point, if we agree about that. Okay, so here's the slope there. And there's the slope there. And then the slope at the point of inflection. It seems like it's been getting steeper so far. Mm -hmm. If we go beyond that, what, what, what's going to happen to the slope at points beyond that point of inflection? It's going to fall to the other side. It'll start going yeah. the other direction. It'll get less steep. OK? Let's see if we agree here. Steeper, steeper, steepest. Mm -hmm. And after that, it gets less steep. Over here, saying the steepest. Would you believe that works for all points of inflection? Maybe not every single one. I feel like they're pretty much exceptions. Most, okay. sort of, but yeah, that is that's a good rule. Okay, where it gets to be the steepest. Okay. So I think there's only going to be one slope point between. What's that? By definition, a point of inflection is the point between concavities, between concave down and concave up. That has to be where it's supposed to be greater than this. Since there's only one kind of 
Okay, now let's talk about what, what, you, what you just said. You said the slope at that point will be the greatest, yeah. the biggest. The highest. Real technical speed. about our numbers. When the derivative is uh, minus, maximum. Maximum. Mm -hmm. Would you think the derivative at this slope would be at its highest? Yeah. Between those two yeah. intervals, it would be at its lowest. Oh. Yeah. Negative slope. Oh. Negative slope means we'll be at the lowest value of the slope. Okay. At some point, okay. and over here, highest. at its highest because it's positive. And here, lowest. Oh, it's oh, lowest. So you take the derivative. If you find the what derivative equals zero, you're going to take the derivative of this point. Yeah. And you find the maximum and minimum of that next derivative. All right. Okay. So. Wait, I did not understand. Double derivatize it. Mm -hmm. Double derivatize it. Okay. Hold on. Let's uh, okay, grab all this stuff. No. Whoa. There we go. Hey, that's not okay. Happy if you're me. Guess what's back here? Just lock your word. Lock your word. But I don't know why it's doing this. Small so we can still look at it as we work. Uh, so at this point, you could say that the, the value of the derivative, the value of the slope, is like a big value, right? Because it's very steep, it's the steepest around. Okay? But the thing about this slope, very technically speaking, is it's negative. Right? It's the most negative slope that you'll find. You understand? Just for that um, Just in this specific place. Yeah. Okay. Nice. But over here, it's very steep. It's the steepest at this point of inflection, and it's positive. So we'll see the biggest value of the slope. Okay. So. So it's graphical derivative. that? Graphical derivative. Okay. So we want to find what the derivative looks like, and then find what about the derivative. And once we find when the derivative of the derivative equals. Uh, well, let's let's back up. What are we looking for uh, in the derivative? Um, the biggest, biggest value values and minimum. Biggest and smallest, and smallest the maximum and minimum yeah. values of the derivative. Yes. <laughs> okay. So to find these points of inflection. Find these points of inflection. We. Concavity begins and ends. Fantastic. Okay. We'll get more into detail about that, right? We'll get more into what Aaron was talking about. But in general, we can see we want to find where the derivative is its smallest, right? Most negative, most positive, most negative again. Okay, it's maxima and minima. Alright. Here is like this is where it all comes back to the actual title of this section. We've talked about concavity, now we're going to talk about the second derivative test. Uh-oh. Okay. Alright. So, the, for now, what I'll tell you about is that the second derivative tells you about concavity. That may come as no surprise, or you may have no idea why the second derivative will have to do with concavity. We'll talk about that in a second. Okay. But let's just talk about concavity itself. You know what concavity looks like, okay? So the, the second derivative test, I already told you 
this in words, but you may not remember. The first derivative test and the second derivative test are used. You find the exact same things. They're not used to find different things. Okay. The purpose of the first derivative test and the second derivative test is to find what? You know what? what? You know what the first derivative test is for, right? What is the first derivative test on? It finds extrema. In the very yeah. end, it finds extrema. When we switch from increasing to decreasing, we have extrema. Okay? Um, so, now rather than having to use words like second derivative, let's just use words like concave up and concave down. Okay? If we use words like concave up and concave down, how would you go about finding this? The, now we're talking about the maximum of the first, of the original function. How would you go about finding this maximum and this minimum, this maximum and this minimum? using maybe the derivative and concavity. Those would be like zeros. What's and zeros? The maximize or minimize. Zeros of what? The derivative. The derivative. This would be a zero of the derivative. Yeah. <laughs> this is where the derivative is zero. Okay. What would we say at this point if the, so we're thinking about the first derivative test. We can find places where the derivative was zero. And then what we do with the first derivative test to find out if there's a maximum? Uh, go to the left and go to the right. Go to the left. If on the left it was? Uh, Above increasing. Increasing. Right? First derivative test has to do with the derivative. We're looking at the, if, it's, if the derivative is positive, the function is increasing because that's a positive slope. And if on the right it's decreasing, decreasing the, positive, or the, the slopes are all negative, then we know that from an increasing to a decreasing in the middle, if it's zero, that must be a maximum or vice versa for minimum. Okay? So that was the first derivative test. But the second derivative test, we use concavity rather than looking on the left and the right. What would you say is, is true at this point where the slope is zero with regards to concavity? It will be the top or the bottom with concave? Okay. Concave up or concave up? Okay, so this, this slope is zero, and what kind of concavity does it have? Down. Would you say that if it's a slope of zero and concave down, you have a maximum? And if it's a zero and concave up at the same time? A minimum. A minimum. Okay. So now we don't even have to look on the left and the right. We just look at the same point. Look at this point. Is it a slope of zero? Yes. It's a candidate for being a maximum or a minimum. And then when I find out the concavity, is it concave up? Yeah, it is. If it's got a zero slope and it's concave up, it's got to be a minimum. Right? It's going to be concave up here and it's going to be concave up over here. Okay, so that's the second derivative test, you know, a little bit simplified. Okay, uh, well, we'll leave it out there because what we're going to do now is just kind of go through this again. We're going to re-explore concavity, first derivatives, second derivatives. I want you to get into groups of uh, let's do two or three at the most three. Two or three. Do not have a group of four. Two or three. You guys talking to me? What? <laughs> okay. Like this. Okay. So this is what I'm going to pass out to you right now, to each of you, and I want you to get in your groups of two or three. Let's go over here. I'm just going to follow the direction. Right. Do we all need one or we get one as a group? I'm going to give you all one, but you can turn in one as a group. Okay. Yep. You want your what? My like brownie. Do you have any group? We're in a group. Oh, you're in a group. Oh, you have a group? Oh, you have a group? That group has like peanut butter, chocolate, Okay, so again, you can turn in one as a group. But you do your best to follow the directions here. Take two different colored pens or pencils. And uh, just keep track and don't forget to